Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. My name is Anne Perrin and I'm a member of the Orange Uniting Churches because we also take in Spring Hill and March. 
and it is my job to, to, to offer some leadership this morning, which I'm looking forward to. And a very special welcome and a warm welcome to Adam and Emily and Charlie as they bring Audrey Joan for baptism today and a welcome to their family and all their friends who are here today as well. The church I often think is another family that gathers around family. Sometimes I think we're a cheer squad when things are going well um, and you would like us to cheer for you, we're here. And sometimes when life is a bit of a challenge and you might need some help, we're another family, if you would like to call on us, who are here as backstops. That's how I think of the church. That's how I think of all of us as part of um, this baptism today, as a cheer squad and as backstops, if the family would like to, um, to invite us to be part of their lives. Now, the children that are with us, or the young at heart, when I mention the parts of the body that I'm going to um, use in my call to worship, you might like to point to them as well. And I'll give you a heads up. I can see some young at heart here already. Isn't that lovely? So come to worship the risen Christ with open eyes and ears and minds and hearts. Come prepared, expecting, desiring. Come to discover and know more about Christ. And of course we acknowledge that this land is God's land and God's spirit has dwelt here since time immemorial. And so we acknowledge the Wiradjuri people, the traditional custodians of this land under God and we commit ourselves again and again to work it for reconciliation of this whole land. So, give us a sign. Speed camera. What is that one? Speed camera. A speed camera. How does that make you feel? <laughs> Cautious? You're allowed to shout out. Come on. You slow down immediately, even if you're not speeding. <laughs> yes, I've done that myself. I've done that myself. Give me another sign, please. What's happening here? What are we being told by this sign? It's raining. How does that make you feel? Wet. Pardon? <laughs> Wet. <laughs> Depends. Thankful, absolutely thankful, because there are times for rain and there are times when we just don't want, want rain, do we? That's one of the things I've learned from being a city girl and moving to the country. There are those times in the country where you don't want rain. And give me another sign. Ah. Oh. <laughs> whose children, whose children first learnt this as their first letter? <laughs> Any others? And I didn't even go. <laughs> so what is it? Come on, what is it? McDonald's, that's right. All right, moving on. Let's have another sign. Oh. What's this a sign of? I can't hear from the back. That's a cross, but what's it a sign of? The church. The sign of the church? And we are the church, but what values does it actually remind us? I can't hear you. The Christ died for us in this Easter season. We still recognise that. But what else do we want to be known for? Yes, absolutely. What? Life. Life and service, and in particular the service that's involved with this church, Saturday night meals, yes, yeah, Saturday night meals, hot meal on Wednesdays, is that right? Yeah. Wiggling wombats for kids, because God put the wiggle into kids, we know that, don't we? Wiggling wombats, yes, that's another sign. Who recognises this one? Who knows where this one actually is? That's our spire, that's right. 
That's right. We're going to hear today um, in our sacred stories about signs. Are there any signs you'd like to acknowledge that we haven't have seen today? Pardon? The hospital sign, the Red Cross. Yes, I moved to Orange in September and the place, the institution I've got to know best is Orange Base Hospital. And the place I've seen the speed camera sign is on the way to Orange Base Hospital. <laughs> exactly, so perhaps you've seen there. We'll hear two stories today. One, the sign of baptism, and the other, the sign that Jesus presented to followers on the road on that particular journey he took. So let us begin today. Let us pray. Loving God, as we come to worship, Help us to see and hear not only the familiar, but the unexpected, the new, the different. Help us to understand and have a new awareness of you and your story, of your love and your presence in and for our lives. Amen. And I'll invite you to stand as you're able to sing our first song for a God who loves us exactly as we are. when we pray we acknowledge God's presence with us and the work of the Holy Spirit binding us all together so let us pray holy God they asked each other were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us Lord Jesus you met with people in so many ways ordinary ways, walking and talking and eating with them, but also extraordinary ways because you were there. You are an extraordinary God and we worship and adore you. We gather today, the events of Easter still fresh in our minds, yet we still have our questions. We wonder how we can join the dots and learn the best way to live the life we are called to. So open our eyes, Lord, so that we might see the stranger in our midst. Give us an openness to listen to their stories. Remind us that we just never know 
when we might come across Jesus, our friend, our master. Open our eyes and hearts, Lord. I invite you now to, to um, join me in prayer by responding to the bold italicised font on the screen. Lord, for the times we hear the scriptures and our hearts don't burn within us, forgive us, stay with us, forgive us. When we don't recognise Jesus in our midst because we're just not looking, be with us, stay with us, forgive us. When we are too blind to see you in the simple things, be with us, stay with us, forgive us. When we're too wrapped up in ourselves to break bread together, be with us, stay with us, forgive us. And when we don't treat strangers with respect they are due, or we look the other way, Jesus was with the two on the Emmaus Road, working in their lives, even though they did not know it. Jesus is with us on our road, working in our lives, even when we don't feel it. Lord Jesus, you spoke on that road through the simple action of breaking bread. Speak to us now through your divine forgiveness. For we hear you, Lord, for we know we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. This is a sign that I'm a, I'm a modern man, actually. <laughs> a very big, warm welcome to you all this morning. It's good to see a fairly full church and great to see a baptism family here today with loved ones and friends supporting them. If you're new here, welcome. We pray that we can be a community of love, joy, hope, peace, a part of your story. You are most welcome here. Please join us for afternoon tea afterwards. Morning tea. Oh, morning tea. <laughs> I didn't get too much sleep last night. Um, you're welcome. Announcements. Morning tea is, is needing a few more people to join the roster. Uh, Laurel's running a, ro a roster for that. And if you'd like to know more about morning tea, talk to Marge. But we really will need at least three more helpers, I'm told. And that's going to kick in at the beginning of May. So not long. So if that's something you feel called to, it's, it's, it's one of those gifts where it's about warmth. It's about making sure you give that cup of tea with a smile and you include people. Come and talk to Laurel. I'm told we had 140 hot meals last night. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. We've started doing that since COVID, that outreach. So 140 hot meals for people that wouldn't otherwise um, easily get a hot meal. We've got a men's breakfast this Monday. Oh, sorry. 20, my head's everywhere. The, on the 20th at 7am, um, talk to Bob about that. It's at Duntry League. Um, I spoke at the last one and I can say it's a really good group of guys. Uh, it's very relaxed, um, full of fellowship and yeah, warmth. It's a really simple, easy thing. So if you're looking for an extra thing to add into your monthly schedule, that's a good one. Talk to Bob. We've got a safe church awareness training this Saturday. So if you work with children, oh, Bev's going to tell you more. Yes, if you work with children, but if you have any leadership or volunteer responsibility in the church, please consider coming to the safe church awareness because it is not just about children. It's about making our churches a safe place for all people and how we work together and take responsibility for that. So it's not just about child protection, although it is about child protection as well, 
Um, we had over 30 people in Dubbo yesterday. Uh, last week I was in Melbourne with about 100 people from the Chinese Methodist Church down there. It's a growing movement and it's working to build a culture of safety across our churches. So please register for that. You can put your name down at the office, you can see me or you can register online. But I'm, I'm really keen to get as many people as possible um, to this, particularly as there have been recent changes in legislation and there's been some new updated things. Um, so yeah, please come along next Saturday. And if, if you're part of our church council um, or part of any of the groups we do with children, it, all vulnerable adults, all, all vulnerable adults it's, it's mandatory for working in our church. So do come along. <laughs> we need you to come along so we can do our job well and, and be a safe church, which is so important. Uh, I told you last week that we're going to have a picnic in, a picnic this Sunday, I since learnt that it's actually my mother-in-law's 60th birthday and I won't be here for that. It's a big hoo-ha, but we're just pushing it back one more week. So on the 7th of May, we're going to the Botanic Gardens at 12 o'clock. It'll be 12 to 2 o'clock. I'm hoping it's full of autumn colour. Uh, that was my logic for picking the, the Botanic Gardens because it looked like it had lots of deciduous trees. Um, so I think it should be a lovely time together. We're starting a drop-in centre, or we're calling it a community cuppa, out at Spring Hill this Friday. Uh, Lynn Atkins, who comes to the mustard tree, made a beautiful big uh, artwork, which we're turning into a poster, and it's vibrant yellow with a, a coffee on it and some faces. And we would like one or two people who, again, from this congregation, might feel a sense of call to be part of that space just to help build community because we are starting a bit small, there's just a few of us, um, but a couple more might help us build friendships a bit easily. Uh, Ray's also going to come up and have something to say. Ray Manchester. Thank you very much, Josh. I am here to issue you all an invitation. I think I've got your attention now because you don't know what it's for. However, during the course of the last five or 10 minutes, Josh, together with, with Bev, have completely taken the wind out of my sails. <laughs> if you have had a look around the grounds of our church property recently, there are areas that need some TLC. Uh, the autumn rains, which are not always uh, uh, here, have done wonders, and uh, shrubs and hedges are getting out of control and need a, a, a good trim all around. As far as the lawns are concerned, uh, they are being cared for uh, due to the generosity of Colin Curl. He's not here today, but we do thank him very much for that. He is here today. You're right, there he is. He's right down the back. He's usually sitting up here. I missed him. And there are uh, unwanted weeds which some of them and the rest will receive what's known as a lethal dose of medicine and uh, they will uh, in, in time go by. But while they took the wind out of my sails, I was going to say, what are you doing next Saturday afternoon? Now, with something as important as Safe Church, we will not hold a working bee next Saturday. Possibly, if some of you are available, next Tuesday afternoon, certainly after the um, remembrance of Anzac Day services and activities, uh, but certainly the week after in the morning could be a possibility. 
If you are able in any way, please contact me after the church. We will uh, either in the church or at the, <clears throat> the, the morning afternoon tea that we spoke about uh, after church. And uh, give me your name and we'll arrange some uh, time to do a suitable work and be. Thank you, Josh. And one final notice, which is a sign that we're a busy community church. Our, we're starting with great joy and heart. We're, we're reopening up a drop-in space here in Orange at this church site. Um, Fusion ran something amazing not too long ago, and it's sort of on the back of, of that space that Cole and um, Bev and Bob and a lot of people have been hoping to reopen that space. And we've been in good conversation with the wider community and such good conversation that that too is starting not this Monday, like I'd been flapping my hands about for a few weeks, but next Monday, because we're going to do a better public story on it and we also have a bunch of other care agencies that want to come in and be a part of the space and perhaps give us some volunteers. So that's really good news because it's about us growing our fingers a bit deeper and, and making good news a little bit bigger. That's the notices, thank you. Now I invite us to hear the promises of God in scripture. We'll hear from the book, The Acts of the Apostles. reading from Acts chapter 2. Peter stood with the eleven apostles and spoke in a loud and clear voice to the crowd. Everyone in Israel should then know for certain that God has made Jesus both Lord and Christ, even though you put him to death on the cross. When the people heard this, they were very upset. They asked Peter and the other apostles, friends, what should we do? Peter said to them, Turn to God and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and your children. It is for everyone our Lord God will choose, no matter where they live. Peter told them many other things as well. Then he said, I beg you to save yourselves from what will happen to all these evil people. On that day, about 3,000 believed his message and were baptised. The word of the Lord. Hi everyone. Um, Adam and Emily have come today to present um, their daughter Audrey Joan for baptism, which is very exciting. So if you'd like to come up, bring her and So hear the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and earth have been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. In those days, I'm oh, sorry, Mark tells the story of the baptism of Jesus. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth and was baptised by John in the river Jordan. Just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Obeying the word of uh, Lord Jesus and confident of his promises, 
the church baptises those whom he has called. And the baptism is a sign of the special way that God reaches out to us in love. Firstly, we have the love of a couple and then the child is, the child is born and this a whole new arena of love is experienced by this family. We are assured of God's forgiveness for the past and the future and we are brought into a special relationship with Jesus and we become members of the church, not simply the uniting church, but the whole church of God in heaven and earth and we are promised God's Holy Spirit will help us all uh, live our lives but we are also called to serve in this world. Adam and Emily, what do you ask of God's church for Audrey Jane? You can just hold the mic. Yeah, that's okay. Audrey Joan has been brought for baptism to become a member of Christ's church, to grow in the faith of Jesus Christ and to become his faithful witness and servant. Audrey Joan, may the Lord open your ears to receive his word and your mouth to proclaim his praise. And, his, and your eyes, Audrey, to see the wonder that there is in God's world. In baptism, we're called out of darkness into God's marvellous light. So Adam and Emily, in response to the gospel, I ask you now, do you repent of your sins and do you commit yourself to God, trusting in Jesus Christ as Saviour? Do you rely on the Holy Spirit as God's power and presence along the way? I repent of my sins, I turn to Christ, I commit myself to God. So just as Adam and Emily and the godparents are going to make a commitment, you as a congregation make a commitment. So I invite you at this moment, those who are able to stand. And there will be some responses uh, on the screens for you. So do you as God's people in this church believe in God who made you and loves you? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's holy Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit and the continuing work of our salvation? I the Holy Spirit. The Holy Universe, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. And we pray in, in thanks. Holy God, we thank you for the gifts of water and the Holy Spirit. Just as Jesus was baptised in the River Jordan, may the Holy Spirit bless this water and all who are baptised in it, that they may be born anew and live in God's light all the days of their life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Charlie can come. Welcome Charlie, he wants to be a part of our morning. Audrey Joan, for you Jesus Christ has come, has lived, has suffered for you. He has endured the agony of Gethsemane and the darkness of Calvary. For you he uttered the cry, it is accomplished. For you, he has triumphed over death. For you, today, he prays at God's right hand. And Audrey Jane, he did all of this for you before you were even born. In baptism, the words of the apostle are fulfilled. We love because God first loved us. Thank you, Cassie. And I... Try not to wake her. It's 
been a while. <laughs> Audrey Joan, I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And on your forehead I make the mark of the cross. Audrey Joan is now received <coughs> into the Holy Universal and Apostolic Church according to Christ's command. We welcome this beautiful young lady into our congregation. Cassie is going to share her about and I said to Cassie before the service that she has to give her back. <laughs> On the screens, there is a, uh, a special um, words for, for a song that we share during baptism. I invite you to sing it if you know it. Stay seated if you like. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. And be behaved young lady. Um, I guess our prayer is that that continues for this couple, but the reality is it probably will not. Asma and Emily, I ask you now to respond to God's graciousness to Audrey Jane by making these solemn promises over the page. Yep. Will you encourage Audrey to grow within a Christian community through participation in worship and fellowship so that she may come to a mature faith in Christ. Will you by word and example teach her the way of Christ until the Spirit draws him to make, make her own response in faith and love? With God's help we will. Drew Hiddich and Sandra Cook are, have taken a role for this family as godparents. And our godparents... In fact, we've all taken responsibility for Audrey today, but our godparents are among, in my view, the most important people at a christening. You make promises to encourage this child to grow in faith and to be a good person in our community, to do whatever she can to give back for the gifts that she's been given and help to commit to helping her understanding how to live in a Christian way. So saying to, to you, uh, Drew and Sandra, will you as godparents provide encouragement and support to Audrey Joan and her parents and model for them the way of Christ so that she may in her own time come to a faith in Christ? Friends in Christ, will you promise to maintain a life of worship and teaching, witness and service here in this place, so that this child and all of the children amongst us may grow to a maturity in Christ. With God's help, we will live out our baptism as a loving community in Christ. Upholding one another in prayer and encouraging one another in service until we come. And we pray together. Loving Father, God, we rejoice in this gift of new life 
Bless and guard Audrey Joan all the days of her life. May your love hold her and your truth guide her. Bless her parents that they may provide a secure and happy home. Give them wisdom and courage, kindness and patience, laughter and peace and a love that endures all things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Audrey Joan, you belong to Christ, the light of the world. Audrey Joan, may you always walk as a child of the light. Let your light so shine before the world that they may all see your good works and give glory to the Father who is in heaven. So we go forth into this world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Blow the candle out. And the candle is something, perhaps something you can do on the anniversary of the christening each year to, as a remembrance of, of this day when you gather. Hey, Charlie. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mum. Thank you, guys. She did very well, didn't she? Yeah. We have an, a, a special a song that we're going to share together uh, called Come to the Family. <clears throat> and it, it's wonderful to see um, beautiful new life that you know, God creates in this world and allows... Um, for us to continue and for her to be a part of our congregation, we look forward, uh, Adam and Emily, we look forward to sharing with you and your family uh, when you're able. I invite those of you who are able to stand and sing. <laughs> Bible reading from the New Testament, 
but it's going to be presented to you slightly differently than what you would normally expect. Well, Cleopas, I'm certainly glad to be out of Jerusalem. What's going on with the world? I cannot believe what's happened. I don't think I'll ever be happy again. Yes, such a shock and so unexpected. I cannot wait to get back to Emmaus and try to make sense of it and what we'll do now he's gone. Oh, hello, a fellow traveller. Hello. Who has gone and what has been happening? You mean you don't know? Where have you been these last few days when so much has happened? Like what? The things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth, the prophet, who said and did amazing things in the name of God. Surely you must have heard of him. Everybody saw what he did and how he was handed over by our own chief priests and leaders to be condemned to death and crucified. Yes, we thought he was going to be the one to redeem Israel, but he's dead, crucified three days ago. And added to that, some of our women went up to the tomb this morning, but they couldn't find his body, just some angels telling them that he was alive. Our friends went to the tomb to see for themselves but didn't see the angels, just an empty tomb, exactly as the women had told them. Nobody. You just don't get it, do you? The prophets predicted that the Messiah would suffer all of this and then enter into his glory. From way back, the scriptures we read have talked about this. Let me tell you more as we walk along. So Jesus talked to them, interpreting the scriptures and what they said about him in particular. Here we are then, back at last. Stay here with us tonight. It's getting late. Come on in and have a bite to eat. So Jesus went into the house and they sat down to share a meal. Jesus lifted up the bread from the table and broke it. As he gave the bread to them, they suddenly realised who it was with them. Jesus? Jesus! Jesus! I knew it. I knew it deep down inside something was going to happen. It really was him, wasn't it? Right? Come on, we've got to go back and tell the others. They hurried back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples all about what had happened on their journey. They heard from the disciples that Simon too had seen the risen Lord. He really had risen from the dead. That must have been an amazing moment, um, as dramatically as we could portray it. <laughs> but there's a Spanish artist called, um, a great uh, Sp Spanish artist from the 16th 
1600s, and he painted this particular painting. And if you look um, to your left, up the top, have I got that right? Is it there left or right? Yeah, that's there left. <laughs> You can see Jesus actually um, in that communion state with, um, his with the travellers um, uh, conveying his presence after the resurrection. And we see the little maid, she's there um, just doing her work, but her head's tilted slightly because she's hearing what's being said. So in that moment, she's sharing in the truth of Jesus rising from the dead. And Valaquez um, has included her, just a simple young maid, and Jesus was there for her as well as all of us. And so it's a really marvellous painting for that reason, um, because a lot of other artists actually just tried to portray, portray um, Jesus actually walking with the disciples and, and uh, on the Emmaus walk. Um, so there's another uh, piece of art that I've got there for you, but I think Bob's supposed to say yep. something first. Yep. Can you give a look at the, uh, the painting that we have up at the moment? The, you can imagine that the scene is set in a kitchen and there's a, a bowl on its side leaning on a jar and plates are stacked, uh, ready to be put away. And uh, on the bench is a bulb of garlic, um, a, a pestle in which herbs are crushed, and there's a crumpled cloth. And as Nancy said, behind it, quietly listening, is this servant girl um, listening to what is going on to her. Christ appeared to his disciples... Um, and he was breaking the bread and the disciples have just seen, even though they um, saw who the person was, they've realised, I think when they say the word seen, it means that they've actually seen uh, what was going on. And the servant girl, she can't quite see what is happening, but uh, her entire um, being is fixed on the words. So who is this servant girl? She doesn't have any part in Luke's narrative. It's like, uh, like to us, she's an outsider who can only hear what's going on secondhand. She can't see it or touch it like the disciples who were in the other part of the room with Jesus. She's a servant girl. She's neither rich nor powerful, but more than likely a poor black slave girl, perhaps Moorish in origin. The kind of woman who would have been marginalised and ignored in, within her own time and place. So this servant girl provides a lucana or space in the story into which we, the viewer of Valaquez's painting or the reader of Luke's gospel, can slip. She, like us, is exactly the kind of person to whom Jesus has suffered and died and rose again. Christ's message of hope and forgiveness is able to bring forth faith and belief in the lives of those who hear it, years, even centuries, after the, the events took place. This story takes place for you and for me to remind us all that we can know Jesus each time we gather around a table together. And we do it often in our, in our service. But we take, we take a bread, just as Jesus did on this night, and we break it and we share it amongst ourselves as Jesus did. When Jesus did this, this is when they saw. This is when they finally realised and they recognised him. And then he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, as in our play, were not our hearts burning within us while he was walking and talking to us on the road, while he was also opening the scriptures? Cassie and Pete are going to just pass this around to each of you. I invite you to take a piece um, and eat. 
just to remember um, this, this first um, supper that Jesus had after his resurrection. to share a time of prayer. Lord, we can't, we can't come to even comprehend the pain and suffering that you have endured for us. And we saw today how you walked with your, your disciples on that first day where you revealed yourself to, to us. And then you silently slipped away. We give thanks for the Holy Spirit that remains with us silently today and guides us. It's the Holy Spirit that will guide all of us. It's the Holy Spirit that will guide Audrey Joan in all her life today. And we thank you that you continue to look after us in this time. Amen. We have another slide. I just thought I'd contribute this little bit of um, a painting which I've always enjoyed. Um, it's by a French artist, um, Corbert. And um, what do you see there? A prominent beard, yes. <laughs> a traveller, yes. And yet this a painting caused an uproar when it was painted in the 1800s. And it caused an uproar because the nobleman and his aide are daring to stop on the road and chat to a peasant. And that wasn't the custom back then and it was frowned upon and he actually was trying to put to portray what he really thought should happen with our social um, structure and so he was daring to challenge the culture of the day and in a way 
that's probably the next step or the next type of painting we'd like to see after uh, hearing the news of Jesus, actually greeting and sharing it with others in a loving manner. And I think that the artist actually captured it in a very elegant way. So I invite uh, those of you who are able to stand and share with us in a, as we uh, praise our Lord by, by singing, uh, Will You Come and Follow Me? Very appropriate for what Jesus has asked us to do. Wonderful to be reminded by that, po that by that painting that we can slip into the stories, our sacred stories, whenever we want. And perhaps that's one of the reasons we come Sunday by Sunday to hear them again and again, because when we slip into our stories, perhaps we see them from a different perspective. We also honour the gifts of time and, and the gifts of talents and the gifts of money that are brought to this congregation week by week. And at the back you'll find an offering bowl. Um, and we, this is such a busy church, we do appreciate um, financial assistance um, to continue the ministry that we are involved in. And us, as such, I will pray for our time, our talents and our gifts of resources. So let us pray. Ever-present God, in this coming week, may we recognise Jesus in everyone we meet. And may you take all that we are and all that we bring as an offering to you. And as we share with each other, may we get to know each other better, grow stronger and see you, Holy God, revealed in many ways through our gifts. Thank you, Lord. Amen. At the conclusion of our service, we actually spend time praying for the world, praying for our country or praying for our 
local communities or our church congregation or as individuals. Today we've heard a story of journeying, of companions travelling home and having a very unexpected meeting. So I'm wondering, where are you going this week? Where might you be going this week? And I wonder if you remember those words from the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Say those ones with me. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But what if we replace the on earth with where we're travelling to this week? And I wonder what shape Audrey Jane's journey will take through her life as well. So where are we going this week? I'm going to Dubbo and to Sydney. So your kingdom come, your will be done in Dubbo and in Sydney as it is in heaven. Where are you going this week? Kids, where are you going this week? Back to school. All right, let's replace on earth with school. Your kingdom come, your will be done at school as it is in heaven. Gosh, fancy thinking that school is like heaven. But we remember that as, the, as, as, as people of God, we are to be that foretaste or that, 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 that example of what heaven will be like. So where else are you travelling this week? Spring Hill. Spring Hill. So let us say together, your kingdom come, your will be done in Spring Hill as it is in heaven. You'll have to be much louder than that. Anzac Day March. There we go. The Anzac Day March. Your kingdom come, your will be done at the Anzac Day March as it is in heaven. Anywhere else? Anyone else? Canberra. Canberra. Your kingdom come, your will be done in Canberra as in heaven. Yeah, and there's lots of things about Canberra we might, we might think about, you know, pray for, as well as your journey, a journey home perhaps. Yes, there are other things we pray for in Canberra as well. That's right. One last one. Pardon? The cemetery. All right then, let's do that one. Your kingdom come, your will be done in the cemetery tomorrow, as in heaven. And I invite you to, um, we'll finish our prayer from the screen today. As Jesus walked side by side, by the side of the two friends in their sadness and confusion, so may we work to walk with others when they need us most. As Jesus listened to the questions to those struggling to understand and believe, so may we learn to listen to people as they ask questions about their faith in you. As Jesus was willing to spend time with the two friends over a meal, so may we learn to offer hospitality and welcome to everyone we meet. And so, in our journeying, lead us. In our listening, teach us. And in our welcoming, meet us. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able to sing our final song today, Shout to the Lord. I think we need a bit more trumpet in this one. What do you reckon? <laughs>
from here walk with us inspire us to join the dots of our faith to see more clearly the wonder of the Easter story motivate us to share that story with others and encourage us to live and work with you and in you amen